Okay, uh, ready to copy, Jack. Okay, on panel 11, uh, we'd like you to uh, close the LGC disky circuit breaker. Then we want you to go to activation 25. Do steps 1, 2, and 3. Then go to activation 30. at the moon, more than 70% of it appears as light areas. These are called the highlands. Apollo 16 will be the first U.S. moon landing team to visit and take samples from one of these massive light areas. Areas, then certainly the Descartes area represents one of these types. The backside of the moon is predominantly this light highlands type material. So maybe by sampling what we see on the front side, we'll find out that sure enough we know what 70% of the moon's surface material may be like. And that's how we selected the Descartes feature. Well, uh, basically we have uh, the uh, same uh, type experiments to deploy on the lunar surface. However, we are going to a different area uh, and we'll be picking up a uh, different type of rocks than on Apollo uh, 15. Apollo 11 and uh, landed in the Mari which are the broad uh, black expanses as you look at the moon. Uh, we will land in the brighter area as you look at the moon. It, it's the bright area. And uh, these rocks are probably uh, some of the early constructional uh, features of the moon, though the old rocks will be hidden. Uh, at least the uh, mountains are still there, and hopefully from, we'll learn something from the rocks that are mantling these mountains now. Does uh, altitude mean anything to you? No, it does not. I, we won't know whether we're at sea level or below sea level or uh, 18 or 19,000 feet or whatever. It's a spot on the moon, and uh, we're targeted to land at that spot, uh, and our orbit is uh, compensated for that uh, change in uh, elevation. Since the rover does not have a steering wheel, uh, we steer and apply throttle through uh, one uh, stick, if you will, uh, that sits between the two crewmen. To go forward, uh, you just tilt the controller forward. To steer right or left, you tilt the controller right or left, and the wheels respond. It's a very sporty little vehicle uh, in steering because with a four-wheel steering, uh, you can turn around uh, 360 degrees within the own radius of the, uh, of the, of the uh, rover. So you get a very tight turn out of it, and, uh, which is useful for navigating around craters, but at top speed, it makes it a sporty proposition to drive. Uh, 
Okay, I want you to double check my arithmetic to make sure we got a good course of line. Roll cal angle was minus two degrees. Spam module angles were three five 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 seven one six seven seven eight three five one eight seven. Okay, Jim, we copy the roll cal at two minus two point oh. Command module at three five five point five seven. Over has a uh, 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 80 kilometer range on it. Now we won't use up all those 80 kilometers. The Traverse is a plan for about uh, between 25 and 30 kilometers, and the farthest we'll get from the lunar module is about six kilometers when we go out on the 30 VA up to uh, North Ray Crater. How does that compare with the 15? Well, uh, planned, uh, we will be. Uh, uh, about the same, oh, let's see, uh, our planned traverses are a couple of kilometers further than 15, though 15 did not achieve their, all of their objective due to the problems they had with their experiments package uh, while uh, uh, on the surface. You're going to pick up some that they forgot, I presume. Well, not exactly. We're a long way away from Apollo 15 landing site. Uh, we uh, do have two experiments that were common uh, that hopefully we will not have uh, uh, the same problems with that they had. Uh, we have redesigned and uh, retested and we think we're in good shape now. Apollo 15, we will have three lunar surface uh, uh, EVAs. Uh, on the first one, uh, the prime objective is to deploy the uh, ALSEP, which is the Apollo uh, Lunar Surface uh, Experiments Package. Uh, we have a Duke will spend 21 hours up a series of scientific experiments, including a seismometer to measure moon quakes, a drill to take deep lunar samples, and a special camera telescope that can be pointed outward toward distant galaxies and earthward for a look at the Earth's upper atmosphere. The uh, demonstrate our mission in operation and demonstrate it so that everybody can watch it. It's just really seldom that people get to watch uh, exploration in progress and I think that the television is a good way to do that and uh, I know how We open the hatch. I'll come outside and put up the television pole. We'll be taking a, a command module television picture and a 16 millimeter photographic record of the EVA transfer. After we get the camera set up and we start out, Charlie will come up to the hatch and he, he will be tending the umbilical that provides me with my oxygen and pressurization. So he'll be standing in the hatch and then I'll go ahead and start back I'll go back uh, to the back end of the service module. We have a set of shoes that I can slip into that will anchor my feet, leaves my hands free to uh, work on retrieval of the films, remove them of the protective coverings. We'll pull out the uh, pan camera cassette. That's the large one. It's about 85 pounds. It's a uh, fairly good size. We'll pull it out. I'll bring it back to the cockpit, pass it in to uh, Charlie in the hatch. He'll pass it to John and they'll stow it somewhere inside the command module. Now, after I've returned the pan cassette, we'll go back and get back into the, the what we call the Dutch shoes to anchor my feet. 
pull out the mapping camera cassette, which is considerably smaller, bring it back to the cockpit, pass it inside. about the little sub-satellite to be launched by the crew. Now, the thing that makes us so unique uh, is the idea that we can leave this satellite in orbit around the moon, and then the moon goes in its orbit around the Earth, so that uh, during the course of a month, the little satellite with its detectors goes in and out of the magnetic shield that's formed around the Earth. It uh, has a chance to look in a known environment with what we see in other interplanetary and deep space probes. These areas that we're looking for in the geologic context, uh, large boulders, which we will have to sample for the isotope relationships within units, uh, a uh, large rock that will have an east-west fracture to it, such that we can sample uh, the soil from between this fractured boulder, uh, which w shields uh, some of the uh, cosmic uh, rays that only travel north-south on the landings is taking place right now at laboratories in the United States and around the world. It is here that scientists are analyzing lunar samples, ranging in size from large rocks to dust and tiny fragments that can only be seen under powerful microscopes. Consider this fragment. As the microscope moves in closer, a crater about one-tenth that of a human hair begins to appear. The pinhole crater more and more resembles the huge moon craters. Now, now I, I think, think that what's emerging is that the moon did have a metallic core, which, which, was, which, which was formed early in its history, and the, the moon must have formed under very high temperatures, where at least some of the material was molten. But very soon after this, the outside of the moon was molten, due to and so settling of crystals and so on. You got a variety of rock bodies, some of them as big as the state of Rhode Island. Um, during this time, there was an enormous cross, amount of impact from these huge large bodies, these some of them as big as the state of Rhode Island, the um, you know, 50, 60 miles across, more making these the huge impacts we making before, these huge holes, and throwing out debris all over the last, surface. I think, I think that we're also seeing simil more similarities with the Earth than we thought we were before. And we are, a number at last, I think, within two or three years of getting a reasonable sort of these moon relationships. Being able to see the early history of a planet rather like the Earth, namely the Moon, and having that history obscured on the Earth itself, we can learn a great deal more about the early history of the Earth. What sort of rocks were being formed, how the Earth's crust was formed, what sort of processes concentrated the elements that we find in the Earth's crust. There are similarities among the rock types that we find on the Moon and some of the oldest rock types on Earth. Now, I think this will get us to understand processes on Earth, such as the formation of the core, how the crust was formed, and um, generally, push the Earth sciences, the study of our own Earth, ahead enormously through our study of the Moon. So studying the Moon is not an isolated thing just to find out about the Moon itself. It has much, much bigger implications. 